Mike Atherton arrived in St Vincent for the third one day international at the beautiful Arnus Vale cricket ground under mounting pressure. Being the captain of a losing team on tour is a lonely job and off duty Atherton was often to be seen on his own wrestling with the problems of team selection and tactics. At least he was never short of advice from the cricket crazy locals. When you went tomorrow, when you go back home, you could say these two guys were yeah. selling me. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's a tricky place, man. Yeah. Yeah. Explain to them why I've got a bat. Yeah. Yeah. Explain to the camera. Yeah, well, the um, because the ground, the ground arm um, will be more strain it on the on the afternoon. You understand? Yeah. The side is going to get high, <laughs> and the park is going to be real serious. So it was decided well in advance. If England won the toss, they would bat first. It is a coat of arms. Uh, you can have a bat. Oh, thank you. Goodness knows who talked Mike Atherton into changing his mind, but the West Indies batsman promptly tore England's bowling to shreds. It was a poor performance all round. Um, I think partly I was at fault for um, sticking the West Indies in on what turned out to be a good, good wicket to bat first on, so I'd take part blame for that. Uh, but to be fair, I think the way we bowled in particular, it wouldn't have made much difference had we bowled first or second. Richie Richardson clobbered 52 off only 27 balls as his team made 313 for six, their highest ever one-day score against England, who proceeded to lose by 165 runs. Well, he can't say he wasn't warned, and now, after three consecutive defeats, England's morale was sagging. Well, it's pretty low, as you, you, you'd expect that. Um, I was certainly pretty embarrassed. Um, I was batting at the end, and it was uh, a feeling, you know, that you don't really want to have too often when you're playing for England.